Hey guys, it's Drew with Kush Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we'll be talking about the shirt show this weekend and the Grapevine coin show this weekend. We ended up buying over a hundred silver dollars. We're going to talk about how to price silver dollars, some traps that you can find along the way when you're looking at raw coins, and we're going to lay it all out on the whiteboard and also show you some examples. So let's get this video started. So a few weeks ago, we were reached out to a subscriber named Patrick. He has a lot of Morgan Dollar sets that are raw, and he wanted us to take a look at one of them and then price it up for him. And so we ended up meeting him at the Shirts Coin Show, and we looked through every single dollar, and we had to separate each dollar by its grade. And so in this video, we're going to be talking about how you should look at a raw Morgan Dollar set as opposed to a graded Morgan Dollar set because there's so many nuances and there's so many things that you can miss out on when you're looking at raw Morgan dollars. Are they cleaned? Are they polished? Are they altered surfaces? Do they have rim dings? Is there an added mint mark? There are so many things that if you do not pay attention, you'll end up losing a lot of money and it'll make the whole entire transaction a loss for you. So when talking about your standard coin shop, most coin shops get in raw coins over graded coins. That's just the way it goes. So when you're looking at a shop and the shop is looking at your coins, they're going to be looking for all the different issues and all the things that would add up to its grade, right? So uh, most shops should be able to tell what's a BU Morgan, what the grade of the Morgan is, if it is BU, what are AU Morgans, what are AU Details Morgans, and it all trickle down from there. And what that allows them to do is not only make a profit, but also not lose money. I think most people in this hobby end up failing uh, when it comes to raw coins because they looked at the piece of paper for so long um, when they were talking about graded coins. So NGC, PCGS, CACG, those are all really great services for you if you know how to grade the coin because what you're doing as a collector is you're buying the coin in the holder and then you're saying, wow, that's a beautiful coin. I love it. Let me put it in my safe. But if you're starting to open a coin shop, you have to say, wow, this is a beautiful raw Morgan dollar. What will it grade? And I have to put money on it right now before it grades so I can make sure I make a profit and also know if the coin is genuine and doesn't have a bunch of issues to it. So there's definitely an art when it comes to being a coin dealer as opposed to a collector because you need to have a lot of research and knowledge when it comes to paying with your hard earned money. And so we're trying to make more videos like this so you guys enjoy them but also learn a lot from them because when we started out selling coins we bought a bunch of raw coins and we ended up still having them in our safe or we sold them for a loss or break even. And so we learned a lot in that time, but we would don't want you guys falling into the same traps as us. And so let's show you what we wanted to talk about today on the whiteboard. All right, guys. So get excited, but be cautious. So every time someone calls you, it's not necessarily about what they say, but when you actually see it in hand, right? So you might be called in your numismatic career or if you're a collector, I got this awesome set. I got this awesome group of coins. I got this awesome, you should come take a look at it, right? And your mind just starts spiraling and going and you're like, man, this is going to be awesome. This is going to change our business. It's going to be wonderful, right? And then you get there and it may meet expectations. It might exceed expectations or it may fall short, right? And so we're excited to hear about this Morgan Dollar set before buying it. But we also have to be cautious as well. And why do you have to be cautious? Because not everything that someone writes as a sticker is what it says it is. So we all have different grading eyes. You know, someone that has been in the hobby maybe a little bit less, they would look at a coin and say, that's unk, right? And then somebody that's been in the hobby longer that has sold maybe a few hundred or a few thousand silver dollars, they know that's AU details cleaned, right? And so when you're walking into a deal and someone writes unk on something, that doesn't make it unk, right? It's about what you know as opposed to what they know. So if a collector comes to me and I'm supposed to be the person that understands coin the mo coins the most, I at least need to look at every coin and start out with a grade. So if you're walking into a deal, what you should do is, is ask somebody, what do you want for the coin? What do you want for all this? And so the subscriber, kindly enough, gave us a sheet of what he thinks the grade is, but also what he thinks he should get for each coin. And all I did was next to that, I wrote what I thought the coin was. So if I thought the coin was AU details, I wrote that. And I just, all the way down, 
every single Morgan dollar in the whole book. This one's AU details, this one's MS, this one is XF polish, this one is yada 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 yada. So I, I run through one row and I look at all of them and I try to figure out the grade. And then the next thing I do is I price it, right? And so what he thought AU details was, he actually thought it was mint state. And this one he, he thought was MS 65, but it's really a 62 and, and yada yada yada. We go down the list, right? And so what kind of gets us good here is that then we move on to the pricing. So then I could price, you know, this coin and say, I want to pay $38 or $40. And then I would just go down the list again. And so at the end of the first row, I flip the paper over to him and I say, hey, what, is this okay? Is this something that you were thinking about, looking forward to? Um, are you comfortable with this, even though it might not be the numbers that you would want? And if he says it's okay, let's go to the next row, and that's good. But if he says, hey, I think I just paid too much, let's go home, then that's okay too, right? You don't want to pressure someone into a deal because it really won't create any good word of mouth. What we ended up doing with the collector is when we talked to him about what we thought the grade was, and then we kind of pulled out the pricing of where the coins were on gray sheet, and we had to price a little bit less than that, right? And so the big question is, what do you do when you're looking at these coins and how do you price them in categories, right? So uh, when you're taking a look at graded coins that are, uh, you know, in slabs, you're seeing them as a numerical grade, right? So from zero to 70. But when you're looking at raw coins, it's a little bit different. So the way I would kind of phrase it or, or show it is, I would say, what's BU? What's BU cleaned? And what's BU? Problems plus two. And then I would do the same thing with AU. AU cleaned. AU. Problems plus two. And it kind of ranks down into those categories, right? So if you're someone that's working with a lot of dealers when you buy coins and sell them to them, or if you're working with the public, or it's a mixture of both most times, you're going to need to have a good picture of what all these categories are and be able to spot them and then also be able to price them. Like we talked about earlier, this guy wants a price now. He doesn't want to say, well, when I grade it, uh, I'll get back to you and I'll give you some money for it. No, he wants you to grade it right there. All right, so say you're just spitballing. You're paying 42 bucks for a BU Morgan and you're paying $36 for a BU cleaned Morgan, and then for more than some problems, you're paying, you know, 32. And this could be for just common dates. So what we did during the whole process is we looked at each row, which one was a common date, which one was a better date, and then we just broke it down into problems, right? So say, uh, you know, the 1892S, it was clean, but it also had damage, or it was clean and it also was polished, or it was clean and it also had giant rim bumps, right? So all that should knock down and affect the price at a certain percentage. And what percentage that will be might be, you know, up to you. But there's a lot of dealers out there that were saying, hey, if it's, if it's cleaned, you know, I would say maybe 60% of bid. If it's nice, 80% of bid. If it has more than one or two problems, maybe 40% of it. And someone might say, man, that's a whole, that's a ripoff, man. You know, you should give someone more money. But the question is like, okay, if someone with a BU Morgan dollar that has rim bumps, has polishing, has scratches, and, you know, are you looking at a coin that's saying, man, this is superb. Every customer wants this coin. It's in high demand, you know? No, it's honestly junk. It's honestly stuff that's not the best in terms of collector greater value. And so, you know, when you're looking at a lot of coins that may have issues, don't beat yourself up that you're not paying too much. I mean, these coins have gone through a lot. And if someone's looking at coin collecting maybe as an investment, some of these coins might not be it. They might just be hole fillers for someone's collection. So don't beat yourself up on stuff that's just not superb. We like to pay the most for coins that are great. We don't want to pay the most for coins that are common or have a ton of issues. And so he called us and he's like, hey, you know, I, got, I sold a set recently for 14,000 
And right, here, right here is the where the juice is flowing. You know, I'm excited. I'm very, uh, I'm ready for this deal. You know, but I have to be cautious because I can go into the deal saying, man, I'm going to buy this set for fourteen thousand, or this other, you know, this set could be better, and I have to pay more money. But you know, the God's honest truth, a lot of these coins in this collection had a lot of issues, had a lot of problems, and you had to adjust your pricings according to that. And so, backing into the deal, what does backing into the deal mean? So ideally, you want to sell every nice coin or every problem coin to a collector because why? They'll pay the most. It's the collector. But if you're selling, which you know this is not the case for many coins because they have a lot of problems, you might have to go into a dealer that you know or or whole, wholesale. You know, so we want the most money for every coin, but is that actually possible? That's the thing you have to ask yourself. You know, am I going to go in this deal and say, I'm going to sell every one of these coins to a collector. They're all in super high demand and they're going to love them. Like I said, that wasn't the set that we purchased. We purchased a lot of coins that may have a lot of issues and problems. And that's where you would have to say, I know that someone wants a lot of money for this, but since it's not the most demand or the most nicest coin ever, you know, some will be sold to collectors, some will be sold to dealers, some will be wholesaled out, right? So some coins you'd buy at 30 bucks and you'd, you'd get a whole 50 of them and you'd sell them to the wholesalers for 33, you make three bucks a coin. You might buy a coin for 80 bucks and you sell it to a dealer for 92 bucks because they need it for their customer. You know, for a collector, you might make, you know, 25%. But the 25% is going to be off kilter from this 10% and a lot of busy work and a lot of time and a lot of effort. So you might ask, how do I find pricing and how do I price coins so when I buy them, I could sell them for the right price? You know, when we grade the coins and we grade them correctly, we can lay them out there with full confidence that we'll sell them. But the way that you can get data about it is that you can ask the dealers at your local coin show or local coin shop, or you could talk to wholesalers that you might know at bigger shows and say, hey, what do you pay for BU Morgans? What do you pay for AU Details Morgans? What do you pay for Better Date Morgans if they have this issue and this issue? Get data points from all over the industry and that will allow you to make the best decision possible. Down here in Texas, you might be able to sell a BU Morgan for $52, but up in Maine, you might be able to sell it for $58, right? You don't want to leave that money on the table, but you also want to ask a fair price. And so um, that's what I would do. I would ask as many people as possible, get their information, and then be able to just lock it in. So if I go buy all these coins, I can go sell them to other dealers or sell them to wholesalers or find collectors that might come through a show while I'm set up and say, hey, can you take a look through this Morgan Dollar set? I really want you to pick some coins up. And that will get the ball rolling. You need that cash back because you need money for the next deal. Why it's important to list certain things, we're going to get to that a little bit later, but when you're looking at certain coins also, there's no problem with talking to someone that you might find that's you know knowledgeable in that space. So we talked to a collect or a dealer after the show, and we said, how do we do? You know, Is there anything fishy that you're seeing? Is there anything that's jumping out of you? And he said, we did good. So... With a lot of uh, you know guys like us that we're still learning so much, it takes almost you know 30, 40 years to learn what these guys have learned. It's always good to ask people what they think and ask for help. You know, we're all men, but we're not all macho, stubborn men. We want to be people that can work with others and get their understanding and ask them questions and learn. And so we ended up asking a dealer there, and he said, "You you offered a fair amount for the set, and you did really good. You're going to make some money, and that's good for you." And so this is a little bit about how we walk into a deal and something for listing these coins. So when you buy these coins, you know, uh, it's very important to list the issues that they have in your mind and be able to notice them because when you go to sell them, it's going to be the major hangup, right? So say you don't know what cleaning is on a BU Morgan dollar where you're going to pay 42 bucks, right? And then you're going to market it as a BU Morgan, you're going to send that sucker to the wholesaler and they're going to give you top dollar for it. They're going to give you 46 bucks or whatever, right? And then they get the coin. You shipped it there. You locked it in. You, you spent a week sending it in. 
And then they go, hey, bro, that sucker's clean, my man. Right? So you spent not only spent $42, you lost a week of your life, and you sent the coin in, and you didn't understand why it was important for you to understand what a clean coin is, and then it lost you time and money. And so when we notice things, it has to go not only into the purchase, but it also has to go into the listing. So if we're listing, you know, 100 up more silver dollars on eBay, we're going to include every single light item of why the coin has a problem. Because when the customer receives the coin, if you didn't tell them about those problems, most likely they'll want to return it. So you're going to waste your time and your money, and then eBay is going to eat you up with fees. And so it's good to, like I said, develop that eye and learn more about each series and the problems they could have with coin dealers or coin collectors in the past messing with them. And so we're going to go through right now a BU Morgan, a BU Cleaned Morgan. We're also going to go through um, some XF coins, some polished coins, and kind of show you the whole run of everything so you can get a picture of what we were looking at at the show. So here's just a little glimpse of all the raw dollars we bought this weekend. And right now, we're going to show you just a small little glimpse of them and some problems that you might run into if you're going to buy them. What you should look out for because there's a lot of coins that won't straight grade, that they're raw. They will actually have a lot of details um, that are of a problem when you're sending them in for grading. You'll see scratches, polishing, and whatever else. And so we're going to give you a glimpse of those right now with these coins. Uh, if you guys want to see all the coins that we have, make sure to check out our eBay because we're going to post them all there for the best price possible. And uh, yeah, go check it out. All right, guys. So one other tip for you, if you're wanting to look at any U.S. type coins or Morgan dollars, you're wanting to get a Bosch and Loam uh, seven times loop just so you can take a look at the coin and give it a little bit more of a up close and personal glance because there's a lot of things that you can miss with the naked eye and these really do help. But Another cool tip is that if you are putting coins into a system, so say if you buy 150 Morgan dollars, how do you, you know, use a system with it? So we bought these at the shirt show, so I labeled this SS, and then this is the 109th Morgan dollar we bought at the shirt show, and then we have our costs right underneath that, and we have what we want to list it for, and we also have the grade. So I wrote fine, and then I wrote harsh. And what does harsh mean? This coin's been harshly cleaned. It is 89 cc. It is the toughest CC definitely to get, but this coin has been dropped in so many different liquids. It's been cleaned up over the years so many times, and the surfaces sometimes don't even feel original. The coin is original. Everything meets you know, the correct specifications, but when you take a look at it, it's just really not appealing to the naked eye. If this coin was original, Stone Cold original, it's probably worth another 500 bucks. Uh, maybe even more than that. And so, you know, it is a nice key date, but do you pay the full thousand? I would say no, because you're not selling this maybe to a collector. You're maybe selling it to a wholesaler and they have people that love those uh, maybe more than you. And they've probably been in the industry longer. There's a lot of guys that handle raw that, uh, that have been working through this. And, you know, when, when these guys started in the coin business, most times they didn't even have grading services out yet. And they knew how to grade coins very efficiently. And so most of the time, the most experts you'll find handle raw coins because they have to be correct when they're looking at a coin and not just buying the slab and buying the piece of paper. So this is the 1888S Morgan dollar. This coin's been dipped. It's been polished. It's been cleaned up. So many different problems on the coin. I would say this is XFAU. Uh, definitely has some luster that is still natural on the reverse of the coin, as you can see by those cartwheels. And we labeled it as such. So for this coin, which is an 1888 Philly, we said this one was probably, if we sent it in for grading, it would probably be a 64. And where we bought these, and if we sent them in for grading, it wouldn't really matter. So we were just selling them in between. Nice luster, problem-free surfaces, and just some gentle hits on the face and in the fields that would hold it back from gem. But a really nice, beautiful, flashy coin. The commodates in the set were really strong, but the com but the more tougher dates, of course, had a lot of issues to them. And so that's where most of the 
people that are new to grading coins have their pitfalls. It's another 18... 18- uh, 80s coin, but it's 1887. Another BU Morgan dollar, probably a 63 or 64 nowadays. Also, once again, a lot of these just aren't worth sending in for grading. Just great stocking stuffers for people that are wanting them. The luster's full, and the cartwheel is full also. So this is an 1889, I think S or O. I'm not too sure yet, but. It, it is AU. It's got some great luster, great detail. It's been clean. Still nice luster. A great looking coin. Um, if someone was putting it in a date set or in a you know in a Morgan dollar set, they really would want this coin. And you know n- not necessarily when you're taking a look at a coin, does it need to be grade worthy? But if you're going to sell someone a details coin, it has to be fair, right? If you know there's an issue on a coin, you're not going to charge them full retail for a coin that would straight grade. You know, if you know it would have issues at the graders, don't sell it for non-issue prices. So, I think this is a, 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 let me see, I'm blind here. So, 1904S Morgan Dollar, you could tell it's been heavily polished, heavily cleaned, better date, but she's got some scars, she's got some issues, and so, just breaking through some of these coins, you know, you, you'd love to have them either way, but you have to get them for the right price. If you don't get them for the right price... There can be a lot of can be a lot of loss that happens. Next coin, I think this is the one that had the scratch, so I apologize. The 1889O. It's got a big scratch, like I was telling you about the other coin, but it's actually on this coin. Um, it's hard to get it with this lens, but nice luster, lightly cleaned. It's been wiped, but that's okay. Like I was saying, a better date and fit right into a set. Then we have an 1891 CC. So this coin also has been harshly cleaned. You can tell by the surfaces of the coin. There's haloing around the stars. There's damage also. It looks like they might have tooled it a little bit near the face. And uh, yeah, just a nice phenomenal key date. But it's rather affordable since it's been cleaned and that's okay. All right, so this last coin is an 1899S Morgan dollar. It's been harshly cleaned, just like the others. It's a better date, so, you know, when someone was wiping this coin or used some type of solvent on it, they wanted to kind of buff it up, make it look better than it was, because there are big jumps between XF to AU to MS, right? And so when someone was looking at this back in the day, and they shined it up and they used different chemicals on it, they could sell it for more money. And so that's why they did what they did back then. But now that we see that this was more of a trap than it was a value, you can see these are selling for a lot less now. So um, make sure to keep an eye out for, you know, Morgan dollar sets, but make sure that you can grade them as well. Make sure that you're not paying too much because you have to sell them to somebody that wants to buy them and don't get stuck in them. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like. Comment your thoughts on today's video. What did you learn? And what do you want people to know down in the comments? Make sure to subscribe for more videos like this because we're coming out with them every single week. And we want you to be a part. We'll see.